Today I'm going to the 10 biggest fast food chains on the planet and ordering the cheapest thing on the menu. And we're gonna find out where you can get the biggest bang for your buck. Each food is gonna be rated on only two criteria. First of all, is this food ballin'? Do I enjoy it? Is it good? And second of all, is it on a budget? Am I actually getting a good value for what I'm paying? By the end of the video, we'll be able to crown the value menu champion. So the restaurants are ranked by the number of locations they have worldwide. So we're gonna start with number 10 and work our way up to number one. So first up, is Arby's. I'm gonna be honest, I cannot remember the last time I went to an Arby's. I'm sure they exist somewhere, but I've never met anyone that's like a diehard Arby's fan. All right, so they have like a dollar menu, but it's only from two to 5 p.m., so I just missed that. So I'm gonna have to try one of their sliders for 169 each. Can I do the roast beef slider, please? 188. Thanks so have much. All right, I went with the classic roast beef slider, $1.69 before tax, $1.88 after tax. <laughs> This is the slider. It comes in this tiny little like fry box. Okay, so this is what it looks like. All right, not bad. Uh, it was actually better than I thought. The bun was pretty good. The meat, uh, it was okay. So I would say for ballin' 2.5. Not phenomenal, not terrible. And then on a budget, I'll go 3.5. Under $2, uh, pretty good value for what I paid. I'm, I'm surprised. So it's a total score of 6.0 for Arby's. All right, next up is number nine, Popeyes. Hi, do you happen to know what the cheapest food item on your menu is? Two-piece chicken. Yeah, I'll do the, the two-piece chicken. When I decided to do this, I had to decide to make it food items only, because I know that technically the cheapest item on a lot of menus would be like a fountain drink or maybe a small fry. So from the beginning, I've just kind of been asking people, what is the cheapest food item on your menu and going with whatever they say. I got a two-piece weekly special, which is $3.99 before tax, $4.42 after tax. So look at the size of this thing. It's like a full-on combo. A biscuit, a thigh, and a drumstick. Okay, is this ballin'? Yes, 4.5 out of five. I got way more food than I was expecting, but I also paid a lot more than I was hoping to. So for that, I'm gonna go two out of five for budget. It is so hot in here. Next up, I went to Sonic, where I found out that the cheapest item is a junior burger. And I'm realizing that a lot of the cheapest items at these places aren't even specifically listed on the menu. My total was 165. He tried to get me to add cheese, but I knew that was gonna be extra money. I think it's just meat, pickles, ketchup, and mustard. It was fine, so I'm gonna go 2.5 for ball. And I'll go three for on a budget because under two dollars, that's pretty good. So a total of 5.5 out of 10. As I'm doing this, you might be wondering like, hey, why isn't my favorite restaurant on the list? And the list I'm using is from Wikipedia, but I feel like I have a stricter definition of what fast food is. So I eliminated some of the restaurants on their list. A lot of lists have like Starbucks listed as one of the biggest fast food chains. That's not fast food to me. Like I'm not gonna go there for lunch or dinner. Dunkin' is a tricky one to me because they have coffee, but they also have donuts and food, they have a drive through Dairy Queen, also tricky because primary item is ice cream, but I'm including them on this list because this is a DQ grill and chill, which means they have a pretty decent sized menu with like burgers and stuff like that. So you can still get lunch there. Anyways, comment below and let me know what your definition of fast food is. Which restaurants qualify, which restaurants don't. Let me know. There you are. Thank you so Thanks much. So much. Yeah, have a good good one. One. All right, so the cheapest thing on the Dairy Queen menu was a classic cheeseburger for $3.89, which after tax came out to be 433. Pretty good sized burger. Actually looks pretty good. It's got cheese, pickles, ketchup, and mustard. All right, my rating for Dairy Queen, I would give it a three for ballin'. I feel like the burger was actually pretty good as far as fast food burgers go. Definitely better than the burger that I got at Sonic. But in terms of budget, like was I getting my money's worth? I have to give it a one because I paid almost as much as I did for that combo at Popeye's and just got the one burger. So that's a total score of 4.0. They had like a two for five menu and honestly, I'd probably do that if I were to go back. It seems like a much better deal. All right, I'm about to roll up to Hardee's, but I don't think I've ever gotten like a burger from there. Like I've never tried their thick burgers or anything like that. I've also never seen anybody at this Hardee's, so I assume it's open, but I guess we'll find out. All right, Hardee's did have a $5 meal deal, but no value menu, so I just got a single hamburger for $1.99 or $2.22 after tax. Pretty good sized burger. Oh, maybe the paper was just thick. The meat is hidden beneath the bread. All right, we got ketchup, mustard, and some pickles underneath the patty. Interesting move, Hardee's. If you live in some parts of the country, you might have Carl's Jr. instead of Hardee's. And I learned doing research for this video that they are not the exact same restaurant, but they're like sibling restaurants owned by the same parent company. Okay, pretty middle of the road. So for ballin', I'm gonna say 2.5 and then on a budget. Yeah, man, I just wish it were cheaper. I'm gonna say 2.5. Nothing to write home about. Total of 5.0 for Hardee's. All right, next up, we're gonna visit a hot and juicy redhead and her name is Wendy. 
All right, we're at number five, and that means that we're in the top half of the top 10 here. I actually really like Wendy's. I normally get the Dave's triple combo, which is really good. It's like a lot of food, but it comes out to be around $13. And so I'm excited to see what I can get for just a couple bucks. One junior cheeseburger, please. Thanks so much. Have a good one. All right, I ended up getting the junior cheeseburger, which is $1.99 before tax, $2.21 after tax. And I think because I'm trying to stay true to the rules that I set for myself, I'm not getting the best deal possible. I think that would be ordering the four for four, where you can get this plus nuggets, plus fries, plus a drink for just $2 more. But hey, I don't make the rules. Oh, okay, looking very plain right now. Kind of sad cheese right there. Okay, looks like pickles, ketchup, and mustard. Seems to be pretty standard fare for these value burgers. Square patty. All right, Wendy's, was this ballin'? I'm gonna have to say middle of the road. I'll go three, because I'm feeling generous. I should have gotten a drink. Was it on a budget? Do I feel like I got my money's worth? I'm gonna say not really, like I wish that that was just a dollar, so I'll give it a two. So that's a total of 5.0 for Wendy's. All right, next up is the always delicious Taco Bell. The always delicious Taco Bell. All right, Taco Bell's one place where I don't have to ask what the cheapest menu item is. Incidentally, the day that I'm filming this is also the first day that the Mexican pizza is available. <laughs> Mexican pizza. So the value menu here is called the Cravings value menu and they have items for a dollar, two dollars, and five dollars. Like a copy of your seat? Yes, please. Thank you. You always gotta get a copy of their seat because there's a survey to win five hundred dollars on the back. Have a good one. All right, they were out of both chicken and Baja Blast, so it's a sad day in Taco Bell history. But I ordered the cheesy bean and rice burrito for $1.10, and I threw in a beefy melt burrito for $2. Per the rules of the game, I'm just gonna be judging Taco Bell on the $1 item, which comes out to be $1.32 after tax. So just for a size comparison, this is the $2 one, and this is the $1 one. It's pretty big. I just remembered I still have two more fast food restaurants I have to go to. I need to pace myself. Would've been really nice to have a Baja Blast to wash this down. All right, was Taco Bell ballin'? I feel like rice and refried beans are kind of the cheapest burrito fillers. So it's not necessarily the best item on the menu, but I still think it's a pretty good meal. So I'm gonna say 4.0 for ballin'. And then for on a budget, I gotta go 5.0. It's by far the cheapest menu item I've gotten today. And I feel like just quantity wise, you get more than you pay for. I'm sweating so much. That brings Taco Bell into first place with a 9.0. But yeah, if you ever get a chance and they're not out of chicken, you should try the $2 grilled chicken burrito. All right, next we're headed to number three, Burger King. There was a Burger King that I could walk to from my house as a kid, and I'd go there with like a $5 bill and be able to get a Whopper Junior, a four count nugget, a small fry, and a drink, and still have money to pay for tax. You could walk into a Burger King with $5 and you were literally a king. So they had a couple things available for $1.29. So I got a rodeo burger and then some sort of chicken sandwich. The tricky thing about that value menu though is that it was on like a rotating slide. So you could only see it for like 10 seconds and then it would disappear. I'm glad I spotted it. When I rolled down my window, I literally like had this feeling of nostalgia as I got the, the whiff of Burger King. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Okay, so each of these sandwiches was $1.29 before tax, $1.34 after tax. The chicken junior is a little bit bigger than the rodeo burger, but both still a pretty decent size. I'm gonna start with the burger. Okay, so I guess what makes it a rodeo burger is that it's got barbecue sauce and onion rings. That was pretty dang good. That was phenomenal. Okay, chicken sandwich is pretty much what I remember. Mayonnaise, lettuce. It wasn't like the most incredible chicken sandwich I've ever had, but it was hearty. Like, I really feel like I got my bang for my buck. All right, so Burger King, is it ballin'? Yes, four out of five. Is it on a budget? Yes, I think this is the best deal I've gotten so far. So I'm gonna go 5.0 for a total of nine for Burger King. So I was not expecting this, but Burger King and Taco Bell are now tied for the lead. All right, I know we only have a couple more to go, but Burger King is gonna be the place to beat. It's good to know that in 2022, you can still walk into a Burger King with a $5 bill and get a full meal. All right, next I'm headed to KFC, which comes in at number two on the list. Honestly, I was a little surprised to see it that high, but I guess they have a ton of restaurants in Asia. At this point, I was starting to get pretty full, but I pressed on for the sake of science. The employees told me about a menu item called the Chicken Little, which was essentially one chicken tender on a bun with pickles and mayonnaise. Like, probably too much mayonnaise, which was 219 or 244 after tax. They also threw a bunch of other stuff in my bag, like mashed potatoes and coleslaw to try to convince me to fill out a positive survey. But I wasn't gonna let their generosity sway my rating of the chicken little. A uh hot. -huh. That's very hot. I should have gotten a drink, man. At McDonald's, I'm definitely getting a drink. Look at all that mayonnaise. All right, KFC, was that ballin'? Yeah, I'd give that like a three out of five. Was it on a budget? Uh, again, a little bit more than I wanted to pay, so I'm gonna give it a 3.5. All right, and last but not least, we're headed to McDonald's, the king of fast food restaurants. Not necessarily the best, but like when you think fast food, you think McDonald's. And I think they pioneered the dollar menu, which now is like a one, two, three dollar menu. It's really fallen from its former glory.
This is saying that the McChicken is just $1.19, so that's a lot less than I thought it was. Could I get uh, one McChicken and one large Coke, please? How are you doing? Thank you. Hey, while I'm waiting for my McDonald's, I just want to let you know that in order to not be wasteful, I'm taking the totals of all my receipts from today, doubling it, and making a donation to a local food bank in that amount. Thank you so much. All right, from McDonald's, I was able to get a McChicken for $1.19, which after tax, that came out to be $1.32. Fingers just plunged straight into a puddle of mayonnaise. I do think it is slightly larger than the chicken sandwich I got at Burger King, and I paid slightly less at McDonald's. But man, that rodeo burger from Burger King, I feel like was just really high quality compared to something like this. This whole experience would have been like 10 times better if I had gotten a drink earlier on. <laughs> It's no good. All right, Mickey D's was that ballin'. The McChicken is a classic, but I just don't feel like it's phenomenal. Different, but kind of on par with what I got at KFC. So I'm gonna give this another 3.0. Now on a budget, I gotta say, this was again, cheaper than I remember it being. So I guess I'd give McDonald's a 4.75, not the cheapest item of the day, but pretty high up there. All right, so if my math is correct, that means that Burger King and Taco Bell are tied for first place with a 9.0. Here's how I'm gonna do the tiebreaker. Because I was in desperate need of a beverage, all day. I'm gonna give it to the restaurant that has the most affordable drink. And that restaurant was Burger King with a $1 value drink. As much as I love Taco Bell, unless you catch them during happy hour, drinks can get a little expensive, even if you're just getting a small soda. So congratulations to Burger King, who's being crowned the value menu champion. I feel like it's well-deserved. They probably have the closest thing to a true dollar menu. And just like that, believe it or not, this is the last episode of season three. I can't thank you enough for being along for the ride this season. These episodes have really been a joy for me to make and it means the world to me that you would take the time to watch. I really do hope that they make your life a little bit lighter. To show my gratitude, I'm giving away free stickers over on Instagram, so head on over there and claim yours before they're gone. Also, the Studio Review store is open for another limited run. There's some new stuff in there plus some old classics, so if you're interested, you should go check that out before the store closes on Memorial Day. The link is in the description. And finally, if you'd be so kind, you can click subscribe right here to help me reach my goal of getting a thousand subscribers before the end of the summer. That will also allow you to get notified when the studio review returns for season four. But in the meantime, just remember that even when it doesn't feel like it, it's gonna be okay. I'll see you soon.